Hello, BookTube. It's me again. <laughs> I've got a mail hall. <laughs> no vitriol. <laughs> no phlegm. Except with these provoke. <laughs> I'm done with my, my controversy videos for now. Although they were fun. <laughs> I should wade into more controversies just to, just to annoy you all. Uh, but let's see. Let's see what we have this time around. Oh, God. It's another book on sleep. Wow. This was from Yale University Press. Comes out in late March, and it's called The Mystery of Sleep. Why a good night's rest is vital to a better, healthier life. I can certainly sympathize with that these days, since I, I don't get any sleep. I am, I am on bathroom duty, around the clock. Uh, but these books used to interest me vitally, they, and they will again in time. Uh, because I'm, I'm freakish when it comes to sleep. I don't require anything near as much of it as a normal person does. And, and that's, that's been of interest to uh, sleep specialists my whole life at, at Mass General and elsewhere. Uh, but I love reading about it. I, I love reading about it because I've always been fascinated by the ways that humans react to sleep, to this, this vast stretch of being unconscious. I know, I know some people who, uh, who sleep for eight solid hours of complete comatose immobility. Uh, that, uh, that just amazes me. <laughs> anyway, uh, Okay, the next one is a novel uh, by Ron Curry. It's due in early March, and it's called The One-Eyed Man. Uh, that is the cover right there. I uh, don't think I got the advanced copy of this. Uh, a man in his early 40s has lost his wife, his sense of self, and according to most, his mind. Alone with his grief and weary of a world filled with lies and delusions, he becomes a doomed truth-teller, misunderstood by friends and strangers alike. Uh, this is by the author of a book called Everything Matters, which was incredibly good. Uh, I haven't read this, but uh, but you, you take that into account. When you get a new, a new novel by somebody, you, you think, okay, what have you written in the past, and did I really like it? And Everything Matters was great. High Steve recommendation for fiction. Uh, and we've got this. What is this? It's nice and heavy. Oh, good, 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 good. This is the finished copy. This comes out in March. This is the finished copy of... I can't remember if we saw the advanced copy on this channel before. The Malmedy Massacre. This is uh, by Stephen Remy, who is a professor of history at Brooklyn College. Uh, and this is about a, a famous incident, an infamous incident, during uh, the Battle of the Bulge, so-called Battle of the Bulge, where a uh, panzer division captured a group of Allied soldiers, marched them into a snow-covered field, and mowed them down with machine gun fire. And you might think, well, so what? Uh, but it was it was a, a flashpoint of war crimes thinking, and, and uh, uh, there was a trial, and there was a, a bunch of for some reason, whatever reason, it has struck in the legal and po popular imagination and generated a huge amount of interesting reading. Oh my! It's one of those little subjects in history that never fails to interest. Uh, so I was very happy to see a big new book on it. Uh, what have we got here? Next one is two. What's the matter, baby girl? Hmm. She hasn't been feeling well at all. Well, that's not not feeling poorly. It's just she's losing. She's her hind legs have undergone a big jump in their lameness. That's and it's clearly bothering her. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see here. All right, the next one is another novel. This is Flesh and Bone and Water. Uh, Oh, it's a debut. I, I always like debuts. That's good. Andre is a listless Brazilian teenager and the son of a successful plastic surgeon who lives a life of wealth and privilege, shuttling between the hot sands of Ipanema and his family's luxurious penthouse apartment. In 1985, when he is just 16, Andre's mother is killed in a car accident. Clouded with grief, Andre, his younger brother Tiago, and their father travel from their domestic hel help or with their domestic help, well, I never travel without mine, <laughs> uh, to a jungle city on the mouth of the Amazon, where the intense heat of the rainforest only serves to heighten their volatile emotions. After they arrive back in Rio, uh, Andre's father loses himself in his work, while Andre spends his evenings in the family apartment with Luana, the beautiful daughter of the family's maid. Okay. A debut novel by Luisa Salma. Okay. All right, and then the next one, in this same... Oh, good. In this same uh, batch here, 
uh, is another debut novel, and this one I actually read a bit of ahead of time and liked it a lot. I haven't, I haven't tried Flesh and Bone and Water, but I, uh, this one is Live from Cairo by uh, the author with the just ever so slightly British name of Ian Bassingthwaite. <laughs> uh, and let's see here. Uh, he got a Fulbright scholarship to Egypt, and this book, I think, is the result. It is an exuberant, dazzling debut story of Dahlia, a strong-willed Iraqi refugee who finds herself trapped in Egypt after her petition to resettle in America with her husband, Omran, is denied. Charlie, her foolhardy attorney, whose frustration with the legal bureaucracy and complicated feelings for Dahlia lead him to forge a not entirely legal plan to get her out, Aus, Charlie's fastidious translator and only friend who spends his days trying to help people through the system and his nights protesting in Tahir Square, and Hannah, a young and disenchanted Iraqi-American resettlement officer. Okay, Ian Bassingthwaite was probably working on this for two or three years at least, but he hit the mother load when it comes to timing. Good Lord. There were like ten hot-button issues from the current day's news cycle in that description. So good for him. Uh, this comes out, oh God, when? July. Oh, too bad. A lot of this furor will have settled by then into a, a, solify, a solidified pattern of fascism. And most of the protesters by then will be in jail. <laughs> I wonder if the book will get stopped from publication. I guess we'll find out. Uh, okay, what is this? This is A Wolf on a String by Benjamin Black. There's a feel of historical novel to it. Uh, it's a chilling political thriller written under the pen name of Benjamin Black. Oh, who's the, who's the pen name? Oh, wait, I know this. Who is... Who is uh, Benjamin... Oh, John Banville. John Banville is, is the... It, this is his thriller pen name. Uh, when a young when young Christian Stern arrives in 1599 Prague, that's the exact same year that Deb and I arrived in Prague. <sighs> the memories. Uh, with nothing but a small purse, a letter of recommendation, and a burning desire for power, he notices right off the bat that its residents exist in a state of constant distraction, always keening to hear potential gossip. All of Prague seems to be consumed with the intrigues of the court and its constantly shifting political affiliations. The dangers become all too apparent. Okay, all right, so that's a historical thriller for June. Uh, moving right along, making fine progress here. We'll try not to have just a barrage of 20-minute videos. So you don't, nobody needs that. Oh, okay, all right, this is from Harvard University Press. This is uh, Zero Degrees, Geographies of the Prime Meridian. That's what it looks like right there. Uh, space and time on Earth are regulated by the prime meridian, zero degrees, which is, by convention, based at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. But the meridian's location in southeast London is not a simple legacy of Britain's imperial past. Before the 19th century, more than 25 different prime meridians were in use around the world, including Paris, Beijing, Greenwich, Washington, and the Canary Islands. This book explains how the choice of Greenwich to mark zero longitude solved complex problems of global measurement that had engaged geographers, astronomers, and mariners since ancient times. Okay, so uh, this comes out in in March. Jeez, my March shelves are so crowded. <laughs> I look forward to it. I look forward to sorting them out. Uh, that kind that kind of keyhole history sometimes I find very disappointing. We'll, that has potential, so we'll we'll see if it's any good. Uh, We'll move right on from here. This is another one from Harvard University Press. <laughs> this is Making Sense of Science. <laughs> uh, separating Substance from Spin. Well, this also comes out in March. Oh my god, I'm going to need a little bookcase. Uh, <coughs> with three card Monty shells on the cover. I'm not a scientist, is a familiar refrain among people asked to evaluate scientific claims they feel are beyond their ken. Most citizens learn about science from media coverage, and even the most conscientious reporters sometimes struggle to offer a clear, unbiased explanation to readers. This book seeks to equip non-scientists with a set of critical tools to evaluate the scientific claims and controversies that shape our lives. Okay, but most citizens... All right, okay, great, that's, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, it's not like there's a howling wilderness out there. Most citizens have YouTube, and YouTube, there are a bunch of great science channels on YouTube. In fact, if I remember, I'll leave a list down below of my favorite ones because you can just hit subscribe 
and you'll find them in your feed when they make new videos. The new videos they make are always fascinating. Uh, I'll, I'll try to remember to do that. And if not, I wonder if some of you will remind me. <laughs> it's just possible that it could happen. <laughs> uh, we're almost at the end here. This is, we don't have a box today. Uh, but I just keep reminding myself that the rest of you don't seem to mind this. You seem to like these mail halls. And I love doing them, so I'm not going to feel too bad. Uh, okay. All right, this is another debut. Good Lord. This is called Hum If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Marais. Marais? <laughs> Life under apartheid has created a secure future for Robin Conrad, a nine-year-old white girl living with her attentive parents in 1970s Johannesburg. At the same in the same country, but worlds apart, Beauty Mabali, it's also a... a I used to know how to do this. When I lived with them for a bit, I, I knew X-H-O-S-A. Sa? I almost, I know, I could, if I tried a couple of times, I could remember how to do it. Uh, their language is incredible. Uh, 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 but for now, we'll just say uh, uh, Donegal. <laughs> a Donegal woman in a rural village in the Bantu homeland of the Transcray struggles to, to raise her children alone after her husband's death. Both lives have been built along the, the division of race, and their meeting should never have occurred until the Soweto uprising, uh, in which a protest by black students ignites racial and political conflict and changes the fault lines along which their society is built. Both Robin's and Beauty's worlds are shattered when Robin's parents are found dead and Beauty's daughter goes missing. Okay. All right. So that comes out in uh, July. And I think we can agree that sounds ambitious. The, the, these debuts sound pretty good. I, I love it. That's one of the reasons I love debut novels is that you, you, you know, you read a piece of crappy fiction and then another piece of crappy fiction and a third piece of crappy fiction by sometimes by authors who should know better. And there's nothing that will cure the dis the disenchantment of that faster than reading a rip snorting good debut, just gushing all over with talent. Somebody who's who, somebody written by somebody who clearly was on fire to tell their story. Now, who knows if they have a second novel in them or a lifetime of novels. I myself think that is far less common than, than it seems. I think a lot of times publishers will give a multi-book contract to someone who only had one book to write and then we get a watered down version of that one book for the next 50 years. I think that happens a lot and I don't think it should. Uh, I think there should I think there should only be your your contract for your book for your novel it should be one book, one set amount of money and that's it. And you want to do another one, submit it all over again. I don't think it should ever be three book or two book contracts, but <laughs> that's just me. Uh, I think books should come to authors uh, from a fire of inspiration. I don't think it should be, well, you know, I sold the Knicks and now I've got two other books to write, but I haven't the faintest idea what I want them to be about. Well, who wants to read them then? Um, <laughs> I promise not to rant, didn't I? All right, this is the last one. This is big. This is, I think it'll probably be multiple books because I don't think there's anything this big coming out that I, that I don't know about. Uh, let's see what this is. This is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Hardcover Edition of War and Peace. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh my. I think I showed you a bunch of the ones that I have already. Uh, oh my. Uh, this is, comes out in uh, mid-March, and it is the Anthony Briggs translation, which is uh, is quite good. It's it's quite it's quite talky. Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely, he, he definitely had in mind the idea of knocking some of the intimidation factor off Tolstoy without dumbing him down. Uh, and I got a paperback Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition of the Anthony Biggs translation from Chris and Giselle Rhodes. They presented it to me on camera in a, in a, a video, oh God, mid last year, something like that. And now that I have this Penguin Classic hardcover deluxe, I can take their paperback off the shelf and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> but anyway, there you, <laughs> there you go. That's so. That's a worn piece, a debut novel. Here, let's put them all. Let's put them all together. We've got a debut novel called Hum If You Don't Know the Words, a debut novel called Live from Cairo, and a debut novel called Flesh, Bone, and Water. So it's three debut novels. Uh, then Making Sense of Science, Zero Degrees. Oh God. <laughs> 
let's stop with the the, ama- the flying will end up business. This is zero degrees. Uh, Wolf on a string. The Malmedy Massacre, a World War II book. You couldn't have a book haul of a Steve Channel without a World War II book. Uh, the One-Eyed Man by Ron Curry. And The Mystery of Sleep. So it's a, it's a very tall stack. Too, too, stall, too tall to go in a video? I, I feel that's almost a challenge here. Let's... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> a disaster ensued. That's what I get for going after the glamour thumb shot. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this video has gone on long enough. Thank you, BookTube. It was all, it's always fun to share a book haul with you, especially a nice varied one like this. Uh, and I'll be back soon with more content. <laughs> Thank you.